Hey everyone, Josh Smith with Gotta Be Mobile. I'm here at the Detroit Auto Show with John Ratliff. And he's with Nissan, and he's gonna tell us a little bit more about the new mobility and some of the really cool features that are built into uh, vehicles like the Nissan Leaf. So one of the newer features is the e-pedal, and that gives us better power generation. And can you explain a little bit more about why this is such an important feature for the new Nissan Leaf? Sure, so e-pedal gives our customers a really good advantage on kind of how they drive. It creates a situation where they are very uh, enjoyable driving, very comfort to use, kind of a one pedal type mode. The car will come to a complete stop for you. You don't have to switch your foot from the accelerator pedal to the brake, so the mechanical brake, and the back. Great. And then that will help the battery last a little bit longer because we're going to capture better than in a two-pedal driving situation. Exactly. So it provides a really high regen. So as soon as your foot comes off the accelerator pedal, it automatically regenerative brakes back to the battery, which allows you to recapture some of the deceleration energy to the battery back in the range. Does that play into any of the other smart driving features like the automatic braking or anything like that, or is that kind of a separate system? Evo itself is somewhat different than automatic braking. So okay. advanced automatic braking or advanced emergency braking uses more of a radar-based system. Okay. Um, so it's kind of a separate system altogether. Gotcha. Um, E-pedal does work uh, in some ways with like kind of our pro pilot assist uh, semi-autonomous drive okay. in the car. Yeah, could you tell me a little bit more about the pro pilot assist? Absolutely. So pro pilot assist is our um, kind of single lane highway semi-autonomous driving feature. So we'll maintain um, your position within the lane as well as the radar-based system to cars in front of you, similar to what an adaptive cruise control type is. Okay. Use the radar system to do that and use the camera to keep you within the lane. Okay, so this is still hands on the wheel, but you're kind of a little more relaxed. And I know personally, when I'm in a car with adaptive crews, it's a much more enjoyable trip. And so adding in just that little extra, little bit where I'm not doing this the entire time is something that I'm really looking forward to in a vehicle. Exactly, so it's still a hands on feature. But it really eases driver comfort on the freeway, especially. So it creates some more driver comfort on the freeway. Um, the car can stay centered within the lane. You don't need to do nearly as much adjusting. Yeah, those um, micro corrections yeah, really micro wear on exactly. you. Exactly. Yeah, for a longer drive like that, it really helps to have that system. Awesome. And uh, what kind of infotainment features are built into the theme? Do you have CarPlay or Android Auto or anything like that? We do. We have both Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. Okay. Uh, both fully integrated in the system. Very seamless, very easy to use. Uh, very adaptive to updates to software on both Android Great. and Apple side, so the car can maintain compatibility with the different generations of phones um, and the type of tech we have in there. So. That's really great. And then, uh, do you also have wireless charging? I know that's something that we've heard from consumers and personally that we're looking for in a lot of different areas. We don't have wireless charging right now okay. in terms of with for the, um, onboard devices, yes. but it's certainly something that we're um, okay. Now, one big concern of consumers is range and also recharge time. So the new Nissan Leaf has greater range and a little bit more power. Can you tell me a little bit more about how that stacks up? Sure. So we improve the range from about 107 miles to 150 miles through a bigger battery. So 30 kilowatt hour in the previous generation, okay. 40 kilowatt hour now. All right. Um, Addition, we approved the uh, overall horsepower and e-power to the performance. All right. So in the past, it was we're, we're running at about 80 <coughs> kilowatts. Yes. We're at about 110 it's kilowatts. Kind of edge. So that shows uh, about a 30 to 40 percent increase in horsepower overall and torque. And do you have like the kind of average charging time if you're plugged into a fast charger? Sure, so DC fast charging, which would be kind of the 400 volt off-board charging, that takes about 40 minutes from 0% state of charge to 80% state of charge. Okay, and so, so that can give you over 100. About it's 100. about 88 miles 88 of miles. range in okay. 30 minutes. So and it's over 140. Yeah. That kind of removes some of that. I know I personally don't have as much range anxiety when I'm in an electrical vehicle as I do recharge anxiety just because in Northwest Ohio right now, I don't have the same infrastructure as in some other cities. So I want to be able to find a charger get on that charger and, and get a lot of juice quick, right. especially if there are other people waiting and, and you know, being a considerate EV driver, not, not taking up that spot all day. 
And then with level two at home, it's 240 volt. It'll take about eight hours to charge from zero percent up to full. Okay. So, so park it, park it, park it before you go to bed, yeah. and you got a full charge in the morning. Even with the bigger battery, it's still basically an overnight type of charge. Gotcha. Um, so most people don't really like going to the gas station. Yeah. So it's nice to be able to come home, plug the car in. We found most people don't really drive the full 150 miles anyway. So yeah. the charge time is usually significantly less than eight yeah. hours. Yeah. yeah, I know my wife's commute is about 40 miles round trip, and then something like this would work because she can go there, do whatever she has to get home and still be able to go do whatever she needs to without having to worry about charging up. Now that, now that you're past, once you get to that 150, it feels like to me that frees up a lot. You know, I still might have concerns about going on a long road trip, depending on just planning it out a little bit more. Right. But for, for a car that I'm gonna drive daily, that kind of range feels a lot more doable than what we were Absolutely. a year or two. Absolutely. Yeah, you know, the 100 miles was really, was great for a very specific use case. But okay. I think this one safety really expands now, like you said. So it's 100 miles, people sort of thought, oh, I might get into a range anxiety perspective or uh, situation. Yeah. But 150 really gives you quite a significant margin to your daily driving scenario. So you can run to the work, run kids places, then go shopping, yeah. then make it all the way home. Whereas before, maybe you have to do a little more advanced planning on how you're going to use the car. Gotcha. So it's, a lot of this is about kind of giving you that peace of mind and freeing you up to just drive like you normally would exactly. for your average day-to-day. -day. Right, right. People still want to feel that freedom from their car. Mm -hmm. As we get longer range, EVs more approach that. I still feel the freedom that I get with the car. Yeah. I should mention as infrastructure grows a little more, then the infrastructure anxiety, the recharge anxiety goes down. Gotcha. So that type of deployment is growing pretty, pretty rapidly. So. Thanks for joining us. You can check out a link down in the description. We have more information about the new Nissan Leaf, and you can check out the rest of our videos to see more from the auto show.